At the opening of the movie, a sheet of a newspaper dated 1925 was shown to us. This news was about a professional running athlete named Eric Little who won a gold medal at the Paris Olympics in 1924. Thanks to his victory, Eric was offered many sponsorships that asked him to move to America, but he refused it all and chose to join the London Missionary Society. The London Missionary Society was a religious organization that aimed to spread kindness in various remote areas. Eric was married to a nurse, called Florence Mackenzie Little and he then continued his study and successfully earned his bachelor. After getting married, Eric and his wife moved to China and spent their days teaching at several schools. Eric and his family lived happily there, but 13 years of his time lived in China, precisely in 1937 Japan succeeded in occupying China and spreading fear in various places. Many buildings were seized by the Japanese soldiers and the Chinese people were forced out of their own land. The Japanese soldiers closed the road and strictly guarded it, so it was so hard for Eric to go to the school to teach his students. Thankfully, Su Nyo, his driver, was always there to help him take care of the soldier by bribing him so he would open the road for Eric. At that time, many people had to stay at home, but as a teacher, Eric felt that it was his responsibility to go out of his house and keep doing what he should do, teaching children even if he had to go so far, to the remote village. All the children were so happy and very enthusiastic when they got the lesson from him. But on that morning Eric had to witness the horror. A group of Japanese soldiers' planes flew over and dropped several bombs and hit one of Eric's students who had just arrived with excitement on his face. That tragic event left Eric's feelings shattered and made him realize that no matter how hard his life is, he doesn't want to kill the hope he had planted and now he has to move to save many people, including his children and his wife. Eric then made a request to the British Embassy to repatriate his wife, Florence, and his two daughters, while he stayed behind to help the Chinese people who were being colonized by the Japanese. In the evening, Florence accidentally saw the three passports Eric had made and she was very sad because Eric was not going home with her. Eric tried to explain to her that he wanted to help as many people as possible and he also said he would catch up with her and their daughters once things got better. She accepted his decision patiently, knowing that Eric was a man who loves to help others and won't let other people in misery. Florence and their two daughters left China the next morning. There were so many people leaving China when they arrived at the port. Eric then said his goodbye to his daughter and his wife. He asked her to take care of them and also to take care of herself who was expecting another baby. Florence then gave him a rosary silver necklace as a sign of luck. A few days after Florence's departure, the Japanese came to seize and confiscate all of Eric's belongings. Thankfully, Sun Ya was always there to cheer him up and comfort him when he was sad because of the thought of his family. Eric and Sun Ya then had to move out of the house. They went to the school and lived there with other people who also had to leave their house. Despite his condition, Eric kept his spirit up by playing with the children. He invited all the children to run every morning around the school, and in the afternoon, he would spend his time teaching the older children. A few months later, Eric got the letter that Florence sent from England. Along with the letter, she attached a photo of their newborn baby. Eric felt so touched by the letter, and he felt happy about the letter his wife sent him, but beside him there was a boy named Shio who felt sad because his parents had died, and he missed them too. In the evening, Eric asked Soon Ye to drive Shio to the orphanage, so he could get a better place to live, but Shio said he didn't want to, and chose to stay at the school to assist Eric helping the refugees. A few days later, Eric Dan Soon Ye drove the car filled with medicines to be sent to one of the hospitals. They knew that this trip was going to be hard and dangerous, because the Japanese soldiers were everywhere to stop them at every corner of the road. But for Eric, it was nothing, he would do everything to help others. Upon arrival at the hospital, Eric met a man who asked him to officiate his marriage. The story then continues on the day when Pearl Harbor was attacked by Japan on December 7, 1941. This attack had a great impact, especially to Eric and other foreigners who were still in China. On the day where Eric was officiating a marriage, Japanese soldiers suddenly came and stopped the wedding. All the people who were at the event, captured and brought to the concentration camp. At the concentration camp, they were searched one by one by the Japanese. They took all their stuff forcibly, even the newlywed couple who just had their wedding had to be separated from each other. When he saw that, Eric had the urge to tell them that they didn't have the right to separate a couple who had just been united by God in marriage. Instead of letting the couple be together, a Japanese soldier then said that all the people had to obey the Japanese emperor, because the emperor is God, the one who holds all the power. Now they have to live in a slump barrack in a very limited condition and have to sleep on cold straw and a pillow, not the proper one, but using whatever they have. They couldn't do anything but accept their fate. 
On the next morning all the captives were told to work on the farm for a whole day without resting, the soldiers were everywhere to guard them while they were working. We move to the next scene where Shil was in a rush to tell Sun Ye that all the foreigners were captured by Japanese soldiers and captivated in the concentration camp, and Eric was there too. Upon hearing the news, Sun Ye then packed all his stuff then left the school to look for Eric. By the night, Sun Ye and Shil arrived at the concentration camp. Sun Ye then determined to work nearby so he could keep an eye on Eric from behind the camp fences. One day, a Japanese soldier recognized Eric's face from the paper he read about his victory in an Olympic Games when he was a running athlete. That soldier then took Eric out of the camp and brought him to meet Mayor Kenji. Kenji challenged Eric to race, then he offered Eric a place to stay and provided him a proper meal so he could prepare himself to do the race. Eric has a little time to prepare himself. Instead of doing some training, he used the chance to teach the children some lessons and he shared all the food to the children. A few days had passed and Shil missed Eric. One day he saw Eric then he ran to Eric immediately. Thankfully, Sun Ye was there to protect him from the camp guards. Knowing that it was hard to get the food inside the camp, every night Sun Ye would drop some food near the camp, and Eric would pick it up later, then share it to all of the captives secretly. The day of the race has come. All the soldiers and the captives were shouting loudly to support their respective side. The cheers from the captives were getting louder and louder to support Eric. Initially, Eric was able to lead the race but suddenly he fell to the ground right before the finish line and Kenji won the race. One of the captives, named David, complained about the race, he said that this race was unfair, considering that Eric's condition was not as good as Kenji. But the Japanese told them, the race was indeed fair. They gave him enough time and food before the race. David got beaten by the soldier because of his protest against them. The Japanese then blamed Eric for not using his time well to train but wasted it on teaching and gave away all the food to the children. Later on, they took Eric and David to a dungeon and let them starve for days. On the first night inside the dungeon, both of them felt cold and almost freezing and they felt scorching hot from the sun during the day. On the second day, Sun Ye made it to break into the camp and he brought some food. Sun Ye was worried when he saw that Eric looked so weak, he then asked him to run away but Eric refused it, he did not want to leave another prisoner, and chose to stay. The Japanese released Eric and David on the fourth day, they then threw some kind of powder and cold water on them. Sun Ye was determined to take all the jobs that could allow him entering the camp back and forth as a human waste carrier, and sometimes he would steal a little time just to inform Eric about Japanese's frontline defeats that might affect the food supply for the Japanese soldier who was stationed in China. He also told him that he made it to bribe a Japanese soldier to cut the electricity line on the spotlight and camp's fences every night at 10 p.m., twice in a month and he would use that opportunity to bring some food for Eric by help from Sho who would then climb the barbed wire fence. Once Sho got inside the camp, he would give some money to the guards so he could meet Eric inside the camp. As time passed by, one day while he was teaching a children some lesson, suddenly Eric got a headache and a nosebleed. It was extremely hurt that he couldn't stand it any longer, so he went to his room. Meanwhile, due to the shortage of food supplies, the Japanese became so aggressive and sometimes they tortured a prisoner out of reason. One of the prisoners that was tortured was David, who was getting caught by the soldiers while he was smoking a cigarette. He was severely beaten, then left behind. When Sun Ye was about to clean the toilet, he saw David covered in blood and looked so scared. David then asked Sun Ye to help him escape the camp. Upon hearing David's request, Sun Ye then went to the Chinese rebel home base to ask for their help and created an escape plan for David. On that day, they mobilized some children who lived around the camp to fly the kite and drop it on the electric fence, so it would cause a fire around the camp. When all the soldiers were busy putting the fire down, Sun Ye then asked David to get into a human waste barrel, then brought David out of the camp. A few days later, the Japanese soldiers realized that David escaped from the camp. They gathered all the captives to ask about him, but no one knew, they didn't even realize that he wasn't there all this time. Out of anger for not getting the answer they wanted, the Japanese just took a prisoner randomly and then brought him to the dungeon as David's replacement. That prisoner's name is Lewis. They put Lewis at the dungeon for several days without food nor drinks, and then released him when he was so weak and became very sick. It turned out that Lewis got an acute bacterial pneumonia due to being left out in the rain and heat for days without food and water. This disease is caused by bacteria that entered the human body and would attack the immunity and the lungs. Other than Lewis, Eric also has some symptoms, his head and eyes were continuously in pain. Instead of worrying about himself, Eric thought about Lewis's condition that kept getting more and more serious. Eric then decided to meet Mayor Kenji to give him some medicines for Lewis. 
In exchange for the medicine he would do another race, but this time he would take it as the real race, he promised to train himself well. He said if he won the race, Mayor Kenji should give him the medicines he asked for and he would do anything Mayor Kenji told him to do if he lost the race. Eric started his train shortly after Mayor Kenji accepted his offer. He practiced hard despite the cold weather and the pain in his head. When the day of the race came, no one was allowed to come out to support Eric, so all the prisoners gathered together to pray for his victory. Eric looked so pale but he forced himself to survive without wearing any shoes in the extremely cold weather. Eric ran with all the strength he had left to win the race. He initially fell behind but finally he managed to sneak in at the last second and win the race. Everyone was happy for his victory. In the evening, Mayor Kenji gave the medicine to Lewis and at the same time, Shio was ready to sneak into the camp to bring some food, but unexpectedly Kenji's subordinate, Yumoto, came to the post guard and asked why the spotlight was turned off. The guard looked so nervous and Yumoto suspected something. He became furious when the guard tried to block him from turning on the light. A guard ran to the barrack to inform Eric about what was happening and ordered Eric to tell Shio to not climb the fence because the electricity was turned on. But it was too late, Shio climbed the fences and got electrocuted. Everyone screamed hysterically at the sight of Shio, who died and was hanging on the fence. Shio was so loved by all the prisoners as their own brother for helping them all this time. Lewis also died that night because the medicine he needed was given too late because of what happened to Shio. Eric felt guilty for Lewis's death, so he gave his letter of release from camp which he got from winning the race, to Lewis's wife as an apology. He desperately needed that letter. By that letter he could free himself and get checked about his condition and illness, but his guilt was so great that he had to give up the letter of his freedom for Catherine who was pregnant with Lewis's child. Eric passed away due to his illness a few days later and was buried inside the camp. Sun Yao was watching Eric's funeral from outside the camp. After his funeral, one of the captives gave Sun Yao Eric's favorite watch that Eric had entrusted to him. Sun Yao was so devastated by Eric's death but he thanked him for the lesson Eric taught him to help others selflessly. On August 11, 1945, Japan finally surrendered unconditionally to the Allies and this was good news for all the captives. The concentration camp was dissolved and all the captives were freed. On the other side, the Japanese had to accept their fate and had to commit suicide for the sake of their honors. The End The lesson we can learn from this movie is about how someone like Eric selflessly helps others regardless of what religion the other person believes in. Even though his life ended tragically, he persisted and practiced what his religion had taught him, to help others regardless of their religion, because he thinks humanity is above religion, 